وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين I'd like to welcome you all to our first درس our first lesson concerning the subject of fasting As you all know there are five pillars that Islam is built on These five pillars are essential in the life of a Muslim. The first pillar is to testify that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his slave, servant, and messenger. The second pillar is the establishment of the daily five prayers. The third pillar is fasting, Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, one of the 12 months in the uh, Islamic calendar. The fourth pillar is paying the zakat, which is translated into the poor do. And the last fi a fifth a pillar is uh, the pilgrimage to the holy mosque in Mecca. Fasting is a form of worship. It is something you do to get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal to the Almighty God. Fasting of Ramadan is one of the pillars as we have mentioned earlier. But what does fasting mean? The linguistic word of fasting, of sawm, is to abstain, to refrain, to stop from doing something. So it can be said on not doing uh, a particular action, to fast from talking, to fast from eating, to fast from walking, as it is narrated in the, uh, it is said in the Quran that uh, Maryam, may Allah uh, be pleased with her, alayhi salam, uh, vowed not to, not to talk. She vowed, she fasted from talking. This is the linguistic meaning of the word fast. In Islam, we're not allowed to fast from talking. It's forbidden, it's an innovation. If somebody says, okay, goes to his wife and says, I, I want to fast from talking to you for a whole year. That would be probably a blessing to him, but it's not a, 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 applicable, it's not acceptable in Islam. This is an innovation because you cannot do something to get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal unless the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has done it or has shown us the way of doing it and the reward that uh, we get from doing it. Okay, what is the technical meaning of fasting? What is the Islamic meaning of fasting? Uh, fasting in Islam is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal by refraining, by stopping from eating, drinking, and all the other things that nullify and break one's fasting such as sexual intercourse. And we will come to this, inshallah, uh, in details. Uh, you, w these things that nullify one's fasting, one should refrain from them with the intention of worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal from the break of dawn, this is the, the time span, from the break of dawn, from Fajr, Tulu al-Fajr, until the uh, sunset. So this is the technical meaning of fasting. Okay, is this a new thing? Is it a new trend that uh, we have and other religions don't? No, it's not. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Holy Quran, Oh, you who believe fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed 
to those before you that you may learn self-restraint. So it was prescribed to those who were before us. The Christians have it. The Jews have it. All religions uh, have fasting in different forms. They're not like us exactly, but they do have fasting in their religion. Now, this form of fasting was there. Our Prophet wasallam used to tell us that, uh, told us that uh, Dawood, David, one of the prophets of uh, the sons of Israel, and one of our prophet, because alayhi salatu wasalam, because we believe that he is a prophet, not a king. We believe that Sulaiman, Solomon, is a prophet and a king. So they are, are all prophets of Allah, may peace and, and, and his blessing be upon them all. David used to fast, as our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, tells us. He used to uh, fast during the year. So fasting is there in their uh, religion. Some scholars... I don't know how authentic that is, but some scholars say that Christians also fast 50 days a year, 50 days every year, but their fasting is different. They refrain from eating flesh, from eating meat, but they may drink, may uh, eat uh, bread or, or anything of that sort. Uh, I cannot say how authentic that is because I did not go through it, but this is what our scholars in Islam say about their uh, fasting. And if you look at the verse of the Quran I just read, where Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, Azza wa Jal says that, oh, you believe fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that you may learn self-restraint. This word in Arabic means لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may reach the uh, level of virtue that you may take a shield between hellfire and your sins. And this is, is uh, understood in Arabic because a taqwa is to have this shield between you and hellfire. You have to do something to shield you from hell. Okay, what would I do that would uh, shield me from hell? Fasting is one of them. Now, one may ask and say, okay, yani, to fast, to refrain from eating and drinking and having the pleasure of uh, sexual intercourse with your wife or wives, that is. Uh, isn't this torturing? Does Allah Azza wa wants us to torture ourselves? Does Allah need us to refrain from eating and drinking? What kind of, of, of worship is this? Now, I will not elaborate a lot on this subject, but you have to bear in mind you do not question Allah. As in the case, and Allah has the higher example, I wouldn't question my uh, managing director if he uh, gives me a directive. I would apply, I'd do it, even if I don't like it. With Allah Azza wa Jal, who has the higher example, it's almost the same. You don't ask Allah Azza wa Jal about his actions or her, his rulings. He asks you, why didn't you comply to what he has told you to do. Secondly, Allah Azza wa Jal is not torturing us. Allah Azza wa Jal is establishing a lot of good virtues and deeds in ourselves by this form of worship. You may not find the wisdom behind it, but if you look in all religions, the torture, the, the, the word torture, and this is a, a bad word, the hardship in worship is there. All religions have this. And you can go and ask Christians. Allah Azza wa Jal does not want us to uh, have hardship by not eating and drinking. But explain to me, why was Jesus, as you claim, crucified? Why was he tortured? Why was he beaten? Then they would say, no, this is a different story. I say, and this one is also a different story. There are many advantages behind fasting. And I'll give you a small preview uh, I hope we can go through some of it uh, on today's lesson, on today's dars. And if time is not uh, enough, we will continue uh, previewing it, inshallah. Uh, siyam, fasting, has many advantages. One of them, it prevents you from doing sin. And one says, how is that? If I don't eat 
if I don't drink, how would that prevent me from doing sin? You can ask yourself this question, why am I fasting? What is making me fast? Who knows if I'm fasting or not? No one. See, all the different forms of worship, it's doing things. Praying, you have to pray, you have to do it. Performing zakah, you have to pay. Performing hajj, you have to go and do your pilgrimage. Okay, what about fasting? What do you do? You don't do a thing. It's the opposite, it's a negative thing. You don't eat, you don't drink, you don't have sexual intercourse, you don't do certain things that nullifies your fast, but you don't do. So people, now if I look at you, there's a very big possibility that some of you would be fasting. Do I know that? Does, it, does, does he carry a sign saying, hey guys, I'm fasting? No, he doesn't. So it's something between you and Allah, which means that you are refraining from things that are halal. Why don't you drink water? I can't, I'm fasting. Why is it haram? No, drinking is permissible. No one can survive without drinking. But why aren't you doing it now? Because I'm fasting. So you are uh, doing this for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you're preventing yourself, you're refraining from halal, things that are permissible, would you dare do things that are not permissible? Would you sin? Definitely not. That is why the rate of sin goes way down during the month of Ramadan. Because people are cl closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. They intentionally stop drinking and eating permissible things. Therefore, they know that they should not do bad things, sins that may uh, get them away from Allah Almighty. There is a hadith uh, reported by Al-Bukhari. As you know, Al-Bukhari is the most authentic book on earth after the Quran, the Holy Quran. The Prophet wasallam says in this hadith, if one does not abandon falsehood and the action in accordance with it and foolishness, Allah has no need that he should abandon his food and drink. If you don't do, if you don't stop doing bad things, why does Allah want you to stop eating and drinking? This is a sign that uh, refraining uh, eating and drinking is the lowest level. But there are high levels that you should always keep your mind on. I know a lot of people that stop doing bad things while they're fasting. Nevertheless, when they break their fast, they go 180 degrees to where we, they stopped. They would go on and do sins from Maghrib to Al-Fajr. They say, it's night time. It's party time. It's Ramadan time. So yes, yeah, so I did, I did my, my course. I did it during the morning. So night time is my, my, my time. Daytime is Allah's time. This is wrong. This is the wrong concept of uh, fasting uh, Ramadan. Fasting also makes you aware of Allah Azza wa Jal watching you. So Allah Almighty is watching you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that is why you're fasting. If I go to uh, the toilet and I would like to perform ablution, why do you think I uh, drink, I, I stop from drinking water? Nobody's looking at me, but I know that Allah is watching me. Allah. And that is why I cease and I stop drinking and or uh, eating. There are many advantages behind fasting, yet I think uh, it's enough for today's dars, not to load you with so much information. Uh, if any of you have uh, questions, please don't hesitate, and, and, and we will try to answer the questions we know the answers to. There are questions that we don't have the answers to, so uh, go ahead. Does anybody have a question? Yes. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, during ablution, am I allowed to get water inside my mouth while I'm fasting? Okay. If a person is fasting, definitely he has to pray. And if you have to pray, you have to perform ablution. And one of the obligatory acts of ablution is to turn the water into your mouth. Now, is turning the water, madmada, is turning the water in your mouth 
considered as drinking? Is it? No, it's not drinking. Therefore, you can do this. and uh, Actually, you must do this. But you have to be careful not to swallow anything. And this, if you do it normally, you're not going to swallow anything. But if you uh, fill your mouth with a, a large amount of water, eventually something is going to leak and you're going to swallow some of it. And this is not uh, acceptable. Any other question? Is the fasting of a person who commits sins after sunset, after breaking fasting at sunset, sound or not? Um, in the scenario which I stated a, a, a while earlier, there are f kinds and types of people that would fast during the daytime, abide by the rules, pray in the mosque, but immediately after sunset, after the, the, they break their fast, they go back to their normal life. They probably go to discotheques, uh, nightclubs, um, perform adultery, call their girlfriends, or, or whatever. Now, it's a separate thing. Fasting is separate than other, sin, other sins. So your fasting is acceptable, but to what degree? Here you have to ask yourself, is it 100% uh, acceptable? Is it 20%? Is it 5%? Is it 1%? As a Muslim, it is acceptable, and you are still within the boundaries of Islam because you are fulfilling Allah's uh, orders, and you are fasting the month of Ramadan. But the sins, they deduct, they reduce the reward that you get for the, that, that day you fasted. But still, it, it, your fast is acceptable. But I can't imagine how would a person fast a whole day, refrain from eating, drinking, smoking, all the things that nullifies fasting, and yet he calls his, his girlfriend for a date or for, to go to the discotheque, and he, he uh, uh, books a table in this restaurant or do, uh, does this or that knowing intentionally that he is going to perform this sin, major sin, and Allah Azza wa is watching him. I cannot understand this, but unfortunately, there are people who are so far away from Allah Azza wa they think that it's just do's and don'ts. And I did my part, that let me take what, whatever is mine. Uh, I think this answers your question. Any more questions? Sometimes I work with some brothers and sisters observe fasting even before the month of Ramadan. Like they observe uh, every Monday and Tuesday and some other days immediately after Ramadan, such as the first days of uh, Shawwal or something. And you said fasting is prescribed. And the meanwhile, I watch others who don't observe fasting on these days. Mm -hmm. Are is there obligatory and non-obligatory fasting in Islam? Uh, there are four types of fasting in Islam. There is the obligatory fasting. And I don't think we have the time for that, but I, I will elaborate on it a little bit uh, later, inshallah. There is the obligatory fasting. And there is the preferable fasting, which is mustahab, such as fasting the Mondays, Thursdays, three days of uh, the month, uh, Arafah, Ashura, and so on. And there is the uh, unpreferable fasting, which is makruh. One should not do this, but it's not forbidden. And there is the fourth and last type, which is the forbidden fasting. If you do it, it's not acceptable and you're sinful. Such as fasting the days of Eid. The Eid, the celebration where we celebrate Eid al-Fitr, which is the first day after the end of Ramadan, or the Eid of al-Adha, which is the tenth day of the month of uh, the Hijjah. If someone fasts it, fasts that day, it's not acceptable, and he's sinful. If somebody, uh, fa well, we will elaborate on this, inshallah, uh, on, a, on a later stage. But there are four types of fasting. Only the obligatory type is fasting Ramadan. Nothing else than Ramadan is obligatory from Allah Azza wa Jal, except those you do as expiation. Such, such as uh, if you kill someone, you have to fast two consecutive uh, months. If uh, somebody uh, has intercourse with his uh, wife during the day of Ramadan while they're both fasting or one of them is fasting, the expiation is that they should fast two uh, consecutive, 
two continuous months, and this is obligatory, but it is not part of the pillars of Islam. Ramadan is the only uh, pillar of Islam. I think uh, this is all the time we have for today's dars, and uh, until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.